What's up guys, Steagle here from ProNDC, welcome to another ESO build video. So today I want to present you the Stamina Sorcerer PvE build for the Somerset chapter. If you want to find out just how strong the Stamina Sorcerer really is, stay tuned. So that was the DPS test, 6 mil skeleton with major fracture and also minor brutality from uh, a DK tank just to get um, all the rate buffs that are up 100% of the time um, at all times and then I can also do better comparisons to to other uh, to my other classes and just like find out which which one is actually the strongest. I decided to upload that one. I had other tests without minor uh, brutality and uh, it still makes a little bit of a difference. Anyway guys, as you can see, stems are really strong. We are a red guard, we have all points to stamina, we use max health, max stamina food, we use the lover mon stone because we need more penetration in this patch and yeah, 16.6k HP, 38.5k stamina and 3.1k weapon damage unbuffed. For the sets, like always, we use the Reliquent set. The perfect version, of course, giving us two times weapon crit minus layer. The five piece bonus of the perfect version gives us an additional 1096 max stamina. And then the five piece bonus applies these harmful winds, um, harmful winds to our enemies, which increase in damage every second, which with every stack. So the stack is a maximum has a maximum of 20 and it deals a ton of dps keep in mind that the set is a little bit buggy or maybe it's intended that way I'm, I'm still not entirely sure if multiple people use it you will get less ticks from the stacks and resulting in less dps so you shouldn't run with five people using the set in a group because um, basically no one will get uh, damage from the set however it still stacks with the non perfected version which is much easier to farm. So the perfected one and the non-perfected one you get in the Cloud Rest Trial. The perfected one, of course, on Veteran. Um, 
you will get armor pieces starting at veteran plus one so the main boss with an additional mini boss and then you will get multiple armor pieces and also jewelry pieces with plus two and plus three so yeah that's where you get it the non-perfected version like i said doesn't have the stamina bonus but is almost as strong it's not much weaker so you can farm that really easily just get it all medium all divines on the body and uh, yeah it's really strong and also really strong combination with that set is the Celine set. So Celine gives ma a max stem. When we deal direct melee damage, we have a 15% chance to call on a primal spirit, dealing 17.1k physical damage. Four second cooldown, really good, really strong, especially in combination with the Reliquent set. If you do not have the Reliquent set, you have a few different options. You can just go with Witches of Fidian, for example. It also works, it's still really good, especially it uh, gives you the same amount of crit, also minor slayer. Instead of max stem, you get weapon damage and then also 8% cost reduction. Then you can do more light attacks and that will help a little bit with DPS, but it's by far not as strong as the Reliquin set, not even as uh, strong as the non-perfected version. Um, then you have... Um, you can also use like for example hunting's rage or briard on the body um basically all stamina dps sets that you can craft or that you can purchase uh, you can burn on the body instead of reliquin so like you have quite some options but though though the ones that i mentioned are the ones that i basically recommend then we uh for celine you can if you do not wear reliquin i um advise you to run storm fist for pure single target if you have box uh, bosses with huge hit boxes like valariel the assembly general boss like that go with veladreth veladreth adds weapon damage for the one piece set i currently don't have it here and then um on really large bosses all three disease spores can actually hit the target then you will get between like 4.5 to 5.5 kdps only from the set even Celine with the reliquin combination cannot keep up with that so veladreth for certain boss fights otherwise go with Celine. if if you use reliquin if you don't use it go with storm fist for maximum dps like a war in the dps test um you want to go with automaton so automaton one set that's kind of underrated like I think uh, there's a lot of people who still don't know that it's actually really strong on the stem sword, but also on the stemplar, you can use it on the stemplar too. Um, it adds weapon crit, max stamina, weapon damage, and an additional 400 weapon damage to our physical damage abilities. And who would have thought, <laughs> the stem sword has all physical damage abilities but one, and that's poison injection. All other abilities deal physical damage. That's really cool. So automaton really strong. We wear that with a Nurnhone dagger with a poison damage enchantment and then an infused dagger on the offhand with a weapon damage enchantment. Go to daggers, otherwise your crit chance will be a little bit too low if you replace it with a sword or an axe. On the back bar we have a precise maelstrom bow. I went for precise. I had better, more consistent results with precise um, compared to Nurnhone. However, the results were really really close so it's up to you if you have a nern horn bow you do not need to retrade it if you have both i recommend to go with precise give me better results overall and like i said it's just like a tiny bit of a difference sometimes if you have crit luck nern horn can be better so completely up to you then you have double dot poisons here and yeah that's pretty much it so what can you do if you do not have automaton daggers so do you have a few options so briar heart would be one option so you can go briar heart jewelry pieces and then two daggers you can purchase it what you also can purchase is the ravage set so ravager gives you weapon crit max health weapon damage we'll just like equip it right now Um, and when you deal melee damage, you have an 8% chance to increase your weapon damage by 645 for 10 seconds. And then it basically has no cooldown because it's active for 10 seconds and they can just proc it again. 
and it makes it really really strong so your stats would look like this you have a little bit less max stam but you're sit at whopping 18k hp which is nice however the uptimes on the stem star compared to my stem plotter uh, they vary quite a bit so sometimes i'm sitting at below 50 percent sometimes i'm sitting at or most of the times i'm sitting at around like 53 54 percent but to actually beat automaton you want to get constant 70 plus percent uptimes because like automaton also of course gets buffed by um minor and major brutality and of course also the ravage set but like yeah it's you, you need really good uptimes to actually make it stronger but it wasn't too far behind even if i had like 55 to 60 percent uptime it wasn't too far behind automaton so if you already have ravager you can use it while farming the automaton daggers but you can also use um which is really interesting it's a little bit weaker but it's usable again and i find it really interesting that's the maelstrom weapons and you want to combine that with agility so i tested a lot of stuff so we have three agility and then we use the maelstrom weapons and of course you want to go with rapid strikes um two-piece bonus is when you deal damage with flurry your next single target damage over time ability used within 10 seconds gains 2003 spell and weapon damage so our single target abilities like rending slashes rearming trap and then also poison injection deal additional damage and that makes it really cool and strong again however maintaining a light rec light attack rotation um can be kind of an issue also keep in mind you have really low weapon crit chance completely buffed you're sitting at 63 in a trial so you want to go with two daggers 100 percent of the time do not drop the daggers um i did a lot of tests and i also switched out um agility and the monster set for five set five piece uh five piece set for example um quick serpent set which adds button crit, two times max stem, and reduces the cost of stamina abilities by 8%, because then I was able to do more light attacks, um, but the results were really underwhelming. So it's like Celine and Agility, or Stormfist and Agility, gave me better results with the Maelstrom weapons. Then of course, like, go with Rapid Strikes. Um, but like, for the people that like it's like want to form automaton daggers they just can't go with maelstrom weapons again like it's not that much less dps it's a little bit less but i'm still hitting like um 47 to 48k with the maelstrom weapons which is really nice but yeah let's get back to automaton and i will talk about the traits for for a second so for the traits we have all weapon damage enchantments here and then three bloodthirsty if you have enough transmute crystals and you have enough automaton rings or ravager or whatever set you wear here you can just transmute and use three infused instead it's not that much weaker however bloodthirsty will give you the best results um so for maximum DPS, go 3 Bloodthirsty. If you want to play it safe and be like well equipped for every situation, go with 3 Infused. But like I said, Bloodthirsty is a little bit stronger. Even Robust works, but yeah, it's it's up to you. Like Robust is was like I had the, the burst results with Robust and then Infused, second strongest, and then 3 Bloodthirsty was the strongest one. Like the strongest combination. I think that's pretty much it for the sets. I hope I didn't forget anything. Let's have a look at skills. So, for the skills. I currently use the crushing weapon skill from the Psychic Order. Which is really nice because our next light attack within tw uh, 2 seconds deals an additional 10.6k physical damage. And then it also heals us for 25% of the damage done really really nice and resources are refunded if a light attack is not activated that's kind of cool um 
if you do not, if you like too too lazy to get Psychic Order levels, you can go with Flying Blade. We pick we pick this morph. Otherwise, it will be weaker compared to Crushing Weapon. If you need AOE, just put Steel Tornado instead of Rending Slashes, and you're good to go. But um, yeah, Flying Blade. Uh, the, the ability itself is stronger because of the slaughter passive. Increases damage with dual wield abilities by 20% against enemies with under 25% health. So this one deals a bit more DPS. But this one, this ability here is not the only one that deals damage because you have the spell or passive which adds another 300, 400, 500 DPS around that depending on how often it crits. And uh, yeah. That's really cool because then crushing weapon becomes a little bit stronger. On top of that, it's a little bit cheaper, but just like by 70 stamina. It's not like that that much. But if you, for example, if you do not have the Somerset chapter, you can just go with flying blade instead and you're good to go. Then we have rending slashes. Bleed damage, so ignores resistances, which is also really nice because sometimes debuffs cannot be active all the time. Uh, also really good uh, single target dot. Then we have Hurricane. So Hurricane um, gives us major resolve, major board, increasing our resistances by 5.2k, so that makes us tanky. And um, it also deals damage, a lot of AOE damage. And um, yeah, you have like whirlwinds around you that like get bigger. Uh, it, it gets bigger and bigger every second and deals more and more damage, up to 150% additional damage. That's really, really cool. Then you have rearming trap. So this one gives us minor force, really good single target dot ability, and um, yeah, we now use it on front bar. So we spend more time on the front bar to have more uh, to have automaton active more because that doesn't transfer over to the back bar. And um, yeah, so people maybe will ask like, why are you not using deadly cloak? So deadly cloak is kind of nice. But we do not need it. So you could slot it here um, instead of trap and use trap on the back bar. Um, Deadly Cloak will reduce the AOE damage you take. However, you should be tanky enough with Hurricane Active. You should be tanky enough. Then we have Bound Armaments. So they changed it. Um, <laughs> on the English version here on the PTS, they actually uh, didn't do the um, translation error here. Uh, while slaughtered, your max stamina is increased by 8% and light attack damage is increased by 11%. So that's really cool. Um, he, by the way, here rapid strikes for the maelstrom weapons for the people who want to know what skill to use. Um, so bound armaments isn't a toggle ability anymore. So you do not have to activate it. or you, Like when you activate it, you just um, increase the block mitigation by 20% for 3 seconds. And that's basically it. So no activation need anymore, so you only need it on one bar. We still double bar it anyways. Then we have Flawless Dawnbreaker. It passively increases our weapon damage by 5% and then an additional 3% from the Slayer passive. Same goes for Rearmy Trap, by the way. That's why we also have it on the back bar. And also for, uh, the same goes for Bound Armaments, also because it increases the stamina and our light attack damage. So we want to ha still ha want to have it on both bars. Then we have Ballista. This is the ultimate that we use. 61k, really strong, but completely buffed. It's even stronger. Um, really, really cheap on the Sorg with the 149 ultimate. But yeah, this is um, the ultimate that we always use. Then we have Razor Card Drops, AOE dot. Um, really strong, then poison injection, really strong in execute, and then endless hail, the strongest stamina ability that activates our maelstrom bow. And um, yeah, strongest single target and multi target stamina ability that we have in the game if we use the maelstrom bow. So that's it for skills. Oh, one sec. Uh, instead of rearming trap, you have different options you if you like want to play completely solo and want to have a little bit more self-healing not just like crushing weapon you can go with crit search you can also like what you can also do is go with dark deal if you want to use your magic pool to get back resources so you can just use this and then cast dark deal instead of doing more heavy attacks you can just cast this and then you will get back you can you will get back um 8k health and then 4.8k stamina so it's up to you but it has a 1.2 second cast time. 
What you can also use to also heal others is resolving vigor from the PvP line. It's completely up to you what you want to use. So I usually have fighter skill here because this gives me 3% more weapon damage, which is nice. So champion points. So I currently have 75 points into Mooncalf, 56 into Tenacity. You could put some more points here, but I don't think it's really worth it. Um, we still do heavy attacks in our rotation, so you could put some more points into here. You have Theater Sprinter, 37 Warlord, 31 Tumbling, 48 Shadow Ward. Um, you, if you need more points in, for example, Break Free or... Um, uh, roll the arch, you can just put the points there if you want to. For the red tree, if you want to see the points, you can just hit pause. However, what I will tell you basically is uh, that you have to distribute the points in red tree according to what content you play. So if you play, for example, Cloud Rest or Sanctorium, you do not want points into Hardy because you only take magic and elemental damage. So you do not mind the points here and just take them out, put more points into Elemental Defender. In the case of Sanctorium, you don't even need points into Thick Skins. And uh, yeah, so you just like spread the points um, or like distribute the points according to what content you play. For the blue tree, we currently have 16 points into Piercing. With a Love on the Stone, an infused Torx pack crusher enchantment and Alkosh. If you have these in your group, 16 points is enough to get to 18.2k penetration. That's the maximum that you want to have. If you need more points, take some points out of Mastered Arms. I have 61 into Mastered Arms, and then I have 56 into Mighty, 56 into Precise Strikes, and 61 to Thaumaturge. We have a lot of damage over time, like a lot of dot abilities. And also Reliquin scales of a Thaumaturge. And then 6 1 to Master the Arms because we also deal quite a bit of direct damage. Our crit chance isn't that high, so just 56 in precise strikes should be more than enough. But yeah, take out some points from Master the Arms and put them into Piercing if you want to boost that DPS. So for the rotation, I chose to go with a simple rotation again compared to the flexible one because. DPS difference wasn't that high and it's easier for the console people to actually like recreate the rotation. So what I do is I recast my three dots on the back bar, hail, caltrops, poison injection. If my ultimate is active, I bar swap. Then what I do is heavy attack into rending slashes. Then I use crushing weapon four times. I do I place my trap. I do a heavy attack into hurricane into bar swap. You can also do a heavy attack into a trap and then light attack hurricane into bar swap. It's up to you. Um, and then you just start all, uh, over. If you use our ultimate, I only use three light attacks plus crushing weapon, of course. Light attacks between every ability, and uh, yeah, it's re it's really easy. Like I will I will just show it to you. It's really easy. So we put down hail, cow drops, poison, bar swap. Every attack, rending slashes, and like crushing weapons, and light attacks four times. Two, three, four. Trap, heavy attack, hurricane, bar swap, and then we start over. One, two, three, four. Trap, heavy attack, hurricane. Now we have the ultimate ready. So we only do three crushing weapons. One, two, three, trap, heavy attack. And again, four times. One, two, three, four. It's really, really simple. So, you shouldn't have any problems with it. I if you can count to four, you should be good to go, guys. So, that's pretty much it for the Stemstork build. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section. And if you do not want to miss any more ESO content, I'd really appreciate if you would click the 
uh, if you click the sub button and then also the bell next to the sub button so you get notified whenever I upload new content and also make sure to hit the like button would be really nice anyway guys I hope you tune in next time too so I hope to see you there until then bye bye